My goal is to get Fallout 4's Platinum Trophy. Multiple trophy guides say it'll take an estimated 50 to 70 hours to complete, but I don't intend to take that long. Instead, I plan to do it in under 25 hours, and I'm gonna do it without cheating and no glitches. None of that nonsense. I'm just gonna use one simple perk that the game offers us, as well as a thoroughly planned route to get all of Fallout 4's 51 trophies. It's good to be back. The story starts in the year 2077, where I create my character, have a look around the house, and watch the news, when suddenly the doorbell rings. It's a vault tech representative, and he tells me I've been cleared for entry into one of their underground vaults, which were built to protect people in the event of a nuclear war. I sign his forms, but this guy creeps me out, so I shut the door in his face and watch through the window as he leaves before checking on my crying son. Moments later, we hear on the news that nuclear bombs are headed straight for us, so we sprint to the vault. My wife is way too slow, so I sprint ahead. I'm not about to die out here. Move, bitch! I make it to the gate and see the vault tech rep from earlier being denied entry into the vault. How ironic. Luckily though, my family and I are cleared for entry, and just as we begin to descend into the vault, we see a nuclear bomb detonate. Inside the vault, I'm given a blue Vault 111 suit, and follow a doctor who tells me to get inside a pod that will decontaminate me before we head further into the vault. I take one last look at tonight's dessert and step into the pod. It turns out the doctor is a complete a-hole because instead of decontaminating us, we're frozen. An unknown amount of time later, we awaken and see two mysterious figures who open my wife's pod and attempt to take our son. She refuses and the man shoots her before leaving and refreezing us. I awaken yet again, still not knowing how much time has passed. I find a security baton, which I use to annihilate some rad roaches, and come across a terminal. I notice there's a game loaded into it, and upon booting it up, I get my very first trophy, Future Retro. I wanted to enjoy this game, but was destroyed immediately, and again. But this time, I pick up a power armor upgrade. No way I'm dying again. Moving on further through the vault, I find a pit boy and strap it onto my wrist. I can use this to check my stats, inventory, the world map, and a lot more. But for now, I use it to open the vault door and make my way to the elevator. Before leaving, the game offers me a chance to change my stats. My intelligence is going to be very low, and this is very important for something that I'll explain in a bit. The elevator takes me outside, earning me my very first story trophy, War Never Changes. I find my old robot butler Codsworth, and he tells me I've been gone for 210 years, but I don't care much about what he has to say, and instead I start cleaning the town of Sanctuary because I'm going to need a lot of building materials for what comes next, which is this. Every time you craft something, you gain experience, and I found out that you can stack objects on top of each other, making it easy to level up. When you level up, you can choose perks, and the one I'm looking for is Idiot Savant. This is the most important perk in the game if you want to get the Platinum Trophy fast. It gives you a random three times XP bonus, and once leveled up, a five times bonus. The higher your intelligence, the less chance the perk has to trigger, and that's why I chose to keep mine low. I'll show you how it works in a minute. I ended up building an ungodly amount of crates and got the Fixer Upper Trophy for building 100 workshop items, a trophy for reaching level five, and after breaking down all the crates, another trophy for gathering 1,000 crafting resources. Now I'm ready to move forward with the main quest, and I make my way to the Red Rocket truck stop where I find my new best friend. His name is Dogmeat, and he's my first companion out of five that I'll need for a trophy. We make our way to the town of Concord, where I fight off a group of raiders. A man named Preston Garvey thanks me and asks for my help defeating the rest of the raiders, ending the quest. This gives me 218 experience, and now is my chance to test out the idiot savant perk that I talked about earlier. I reload my save over and over until the perk triggers, and this time I get 654 XP. I won't show you each time I do this, but just know that I'll be doing it for every main quest, and by the end of the main story, I should reach level 50 in record time for the trophy. I enter the building, take out some raiders, and find a terminal that I can hack by guessing the password. I'll need to do that 49 more times throughout my playthrough for a trophy. After taking out the rest of the raiders inside, I find Preston and his friends hiding out, waiting for me to arrive. 
They have a plan to use an old power armor suit to take out the raiders, and I agree to help. But before going outside, I find the perception bobblehead. There's a trophy for collecting 10 of these, and another for collecting all 20. I also found a magazine, and of course there's a trophy for finding 20 of these as well. After getting into the power armor, I absolutely obliterate the raiders and even a death claw that didn't stand a chance. Preston thanks me for the help, and after meeting him back in Sanctuary, I get my second story trophy. Preston's friends are here in Sanctuary as well, and one of them is Sturgis. He asked me to set up the town to make it a safe place to live, so I craft beds, water pumps, food, and even turrets to protect the town, earning me the Sanctuary trophy. After reloading my save to trigger the idiot savant park, I also made it to level 10 for another trophy. The next quest tells me to find Diamond City, so that's exactly what I do. I find a woman at the city gate named Piper. She's the editor for the city's newspaper, and she's been banned from entering because the mayor doesn't approve of what she's been writing. But we lie by saying I'm a trader with goods to sell, and they eventually open the gate. Diamond City was built inside of Boston's baseball stadium. There's shops and restaurants here, and plenty of quests to find. But immediately upon entering, I find home plate, and my first instinct was to find the other three bases. I played baseball in school, so I couldn't help but to do it. I found first base, second, third, and after making it back around, I got the home run trophy. Talk about a hole in one. No, that's the wrong sport, you idiot. After that, I go into public occurrences, which is where Piper writes articles for the newspaper. She interviews me about who I am and where I came from, and since she liked my answers so much, she decides to join me, making her the second out of five companions that I need for a trophy. Remember, my goal is to find my son. That's Fallout 4's story. So I head to the local detective agency, but the secretary tells me that Detective Nick Valentine has gone missing, leaving me with only one option, to track him down. But this game is massive, and it's very easy to get distracted. While on my way to find the detective, I stumble across the Boston Public Library. The doors are locked, so I use my bobby pin to pick it. I'll need to do this 50 times for a trophy. Great! Inside, I destroy everything in my path until I find the intelligence bobblehead. Two down, 18 more to go. That's it for this building, let's go find the detective. Oh wait, another building! This is Trinity Tower, and it is huge. My goal is to make it to the top and see what I can find. I pick a lock, hack a terminal, and fight my way upwards with ease until I meet this guy. The red skull next to his name means I'm way too weak to be fighting him, but I wasn't about to let that stop me. Eventually, I was able to take him down, and when I make it to the roof of the tower, I find these two guys locked in a cage. The man is Rex Goodman, and the super mutant's name is Strong. I help them out, and inside their cage, I pick up the melee bobblehead. After fighting our way down the elevator, I complete the quest and recruit Strong to be my companion. Only two more to go. Nearby Trinity Tower, I enter the Mass Fusion Building, and I'm here for only one reason, to find the Strength bobblehead. Back outside again, I find this strange red brick path and decide to follow it. I end up in a fight against some super mutants and- oh, what is it? Wait, what the hell is that beeping noise? Well, I just got blown up by a super mutant carrying a nuke. Nice, thanks for the trophy. I continue following the red brick path all the way to the old North church. Inside, I make my way through some tunnels until I find a strange sign on the wall. I use the spinning dials to spell the word railroad and a door opens. I meet with a group of people who call themselves the railroad. They are one of the main factions that I'll need to side with for the end of the story, but that's getting way ahead of ourselves. One of the agents, Deacon, takes me on a quest where I find another magazine, hack multiple terminals, and find the deliverer pistol. This is the weapon that I'll be using until I get the platinum trophy. After making our way back to the railroad headquarters, they ask me to join them. And of course I say yes, unlocking a trophy for doing so. After completing multiple quests for the railroad, I decide to do the quest the first step that Preston Garvey gave me. He wants me to help out the local settlements. So I head to the nearest one and the settlers there tell me that some raiders have been harassing them and I agree to take them out. They are at the Corvega assembly plant and upon entering the building, I spot a tripwire and disable it. After taking out all of the raiders, I find a grognak, the barbarian mag and the repair bobblehead. Okay, the settlers are safe. Let's go talk to Preston. I get a trophy for completing the quest and Preston agrees to join me as a companion. Okay, that's four out of five companions. Wait, what? 
I still need to recruit one more companion. How did the trophy pop? I mean, I'm not complaining, but that's weird. Preston asked me to help another settlement, and I agree. During his quest, I find another magazine, the barter bobblehead, explosive bobblehead, and another magazine, and a sneak bobblehead, really making a lot of progress towards several trophies now. After telling yet another settlement that they're safe, I get the community organizer trophy for allying with three settlements. And after turning in my quest, I earn enough XP to reach level 25 as well. Now it's time to set up for the Benevolent Leader Trophy, which you get for reaching maximum happiness in a large settlement. Most people leave this until the end, but it's better to focus on it early because it takes a long time for the happiness meter to increase. I decide to create a settlement at the Red Rocket Truck Stop. I place a turret for defense, a water pump, one bed, a food and drink store, and leave 50 mutt fruit in the workbench for my settler to eat. Now I can go back to Sanctuary and send a settler to their new home and assign them to work at the store. All I need to do is wait for the happiness to increase to 100 and the trophy will pop. In the meantime, let's do some more quests for the Minutemen to earn some other trophies. I meet them at the castle and help them clear the courtyard of Mirelurks, and while destroying their eggs, a Mirelurk queen appears, but we take it down easily along with their final minion. The reason we're here is because now that we have multiple settlements, we need a better way to communicate with each other. And it just so happens that the castle has a radio tower. After setting up some generators and electrical lines to power it, I talk to Preston and get the trophy. Next up is the old guns quest. Our goal is to set up the castle with some powerful guns. And this woman knows where to find them. We head into a tunnel where I carefully avoid getting blown up by the many mines scattered everywhere and eventually find a sentry bot named Sarge. I absolutely obliterate it. And Ronnie hacks the terminal to open a locked door to the armory. I snag the artillery items and flares, go back outside and craft the guns. Now all that's left to do is make sure they work. Yep, looks good. Quest complete. All right, it's time to go for a hunt. A hunt for bobbleheads. I've already found a few, but let's grab a bunch more. Over on Spectacle Island, I spot a green boat, and inside I find the luck bobblehead. I also find a mysterious circuit breaker. I wonder what it does. Oh, it spawns a Mario Alert Queen, nice. Let's take it out with my mini nuke launcher. Okay, that wasn't enough damage. There we go, she's gone. Southwest from here, I see a large red and black vessel in the distance washed up on the shore. So I swim there and take out all the enemies, find another magazine, and the agility bobblehead, earning me the They're Not Dows trophy for finding 10. Just west of here, I spot a building with a large chimney that has white and red stripes. Inside, I find a Tesla science mag and the endurance bobblehead. And at the gunner's plaza, I take out a bunch of gunners and their leader Ryder and find the small guns bobblehead. On my way to the next bobblehead, I was caught off guard by a super mutant behemoth and oh my god, please calm down! Here, take this! Take that, you bastard! Anyways, I make my way to Vault 75 to get the science bobblehead, the Parsons Insane State Asylum for the Charisma bobblehead, and Pikmin's Gallery for the lock picking bobblehead. Okay, that's enough distractions for now. It's time to finally find Detective Nick Valentine and figure out what happened to my son. On my way to Nick's last known location, I'm attacked by another behemoth. This one's name is Swan. I wonder why. Stop looking at me, Swan! I take it out with ease and enter Park Street Station. There's a lot of enemies here to deal with, and it turns out that there's another vault hidden down here. There's a lot to loot and a lot of killing to do. But more importantly, I find Nick locked in the overseer's office. Actually, what really butters my biscuit is the bobblehead on the desk behind him. I unlock the office with the terminal, grab the speech bobblehead, and explain to Nick that I'm looking for my son. He needs help escaping and promises to help me once we're safe back in Diamond City. On our way out, I find a magazine, and just before we escape, we're trapped by Skinny Malone and his gang, but I don't have time for that. Once outside, I talk to Nick, which ends the quest and pops the story trophy. Back in Diamond City, I meet Nick in his office, and he asks me questions about my missing son. My answers lead him to suspect a mercenary named Conrad Kellogg as the kidnapper. To confirm his suspicions, we go to Kellogg's house to look for clues, but not before taking a magazine I find in his office. I press a button under a desk that opens a secret room where I find some cigars. Not just any cigars, though. These are San Francisco highlights. I use my best bud dog meat to track Kellogg using the set from the cigars, and he leads me to a bloody bandage, so we must be getting close, but I'm quickly distracted by a vault icon on my compass, so I go there instead. Overseer McNamara advises me over the intercom that if I want to enter the vault, I need to give them three fusion cores as a payment, but I don't have time for that, and I use my charisma skill to talk them into letting me in. Interestingly enough, that was a side quest, and I got a trophy for completing 10 in total. Nice! 
Anyways, let's get back to dog meat and follow those clues. He leads me to Fort Hagen. Inside, I find a magazine and an energy weapons bobblehead. I finally find Kellogg, and he tells me that my son is being held by the Institute. Not sure who they are, but I hope I find out soon. He tells me I need to die, so I destroy him and his synth bodyguards. On his body, I find a cybernetic brain augmenter, which will be used for the next quest. I also find my 20th magazine, earning me the trophy. After speaking with Nick back at his office to end the quest, I'm rewarded with my next story trophy as well. Before moving on with the story, I go to Vault 81 to get the medicine bobblehead. Now I can meet Nick in the town of Good Neighbor. We go to a place called the Memory Den and speak to Dr. Amari. We attach Kellogg's cybernetic brain augmenter to Nick, which allows me to see Kellogg's memories. They reveal that Kellogg did take my son from Vault 111 and that his current mission is to kill a scientist named Virgil. I end the quest for the trophy, and now it's time to hunt down this Virgil person. But first, Piper decides to strike up a conversation with me where we awkwardly declare a love for each other. Luckily, I'm rewarded with a trophy for reaching maximum relationship level with a companion. Before finding Virgil, I stopped by Vault 95 to snag the big guns bobblehead. Okay, so I have 19 out of 20 bobbleheads. I'm trying to figure out which one I'm missing, and I think I know. So let's go to the Adam's Cat Garage and find out. Yep, there it is. That's all 20 bobbleheads. Now let's go find this scientist. The glowing sea is very dangerous. It's covered in radiation, and there's a lot of tough enemies like death claws. I make it to the cave where Virgil was last known to be and find out that he's a super mutant. He tells me to go to the CIT ruins to find a coarser signal. I pick up the signal with my pit boy and it leads me to the Green Tech Genetics building, which just so happens to be the hundredth location I've discovered, earning me a trophy. <laughs> This place has a lot of terminals for me to hack, getting me much closer to a trophy. And I also manhandled my 300th enemy for another trophy. I fight to the final room where I find a courser. These guys are elite synth operatives designed to carry out missions for the Institute. He uses a stealth boy to become invisible, but I take him down and relieve him of his courser chip, which pops the story trophy. Moving straight forward with the next quest, I go to the railroad and let Tinker Tom analyze the Courser chip. Now I can build a teleporter to warp into the Institute. I'm here, finally. A voice over the intercom speaks to me and leads me to an elevator. I follow the voice to a room where I find a boy. This is my son, Sean. I can't believe it. I finally found him. S923, recall code Cirrus. Oh, okay, this is bullshit. This guy's name is Father, and after talking to him, I agree to join the Institute. Oh, and by the way, this is my son, Sean. Well, I found him. He tells me to go ahead and meet people around the Institute, and after talking with the final person, the quest ends along with a trophy. Father asks me to attend a meeting where he tells us he's dying of cancer and that I will be his successor after he dies. After listening to them talk for a very long, long time, I get a trophy. At this point, if I move on with the mass fusion quest, I'll be locked out of doing quests for the other factions, which means I won't be able to get several trophies. So instead of doing that, let's find the other factions and get their trophies out of the way. At the Cambridge police station, I find the Brotherhood of Steel under attack by a group of feral ghouls and help them win the fight. They're happy to have a new recruit and put me to work right away. I follow Paladin Dance to the Arcjet Systems building where I hack my 50th terminal for a trophy. We fight our way through an army of synths and find the deep range transmitter that the Brotherhood wants. On my way back to report our success, I'm attacked by yet another super mutant behemoth. I take the jump down and get the trophy for killing five of them in total. Back at the Cambridge police station, the quest ends and I agree to join the Brotherhood of Steel, earning me a trophy. Now I'm ordered to take a ride on one of the vertebrates to their main base of operations. This is a very long and boring flight, and I hope it's the only time they make me do this. Oh, come on! This time I make it to their base without the game crashing. I meet their leader, Elder Maxon, and he sends me on a quest to clear Fort Strong of the super mutant infestation and secure some mini nukes. While there, I absolutely destroy my 300th creature with a headshot for the trophy. After proving myself by clearing Fort Strong of super mutants, Elder Maxon sends me on a quest to help rebuild Liberty Prime, which we'll use to help destroy the Institute. We're also going to destroy the railroad, but first, Elder Maxon finds out that Paladin Dance is a synth and not human as he claims. I'm tasked with hunting him down, and when I find him, he tells me that he didn't know he was a synth and only found out recently. I believe him, so I persuade Elder Maxon to believe that this is the truth, and I'm rewarded with a trophy once the quest ends. 
Now we can commit to destroying the railroad. I enter their base, breach the doors with explosives, and eliminate every railroad agent along the way. Do I feel bad about betraying all these people that I once worked so closely with? No, not really. Now the real fun begins. I'm honored with the task of powering up Liberty Prime, and its mission is to help us destroy the Institute. I'm supposed to follow it to the CIT ruins, but I'll just fast travel there instead to speed things up. After a few moments of fighting, Liberty Prime catches up and uses its eye laser to create an access point into the Institute. Upon entering, the quest ends and the story trophy pops. But we're not finished yet. Elder Maxon hands me an explosive charge to place on the Institute reactor. We need to fight to progress the quest, and once done, I enter the central elevator and follow the route where I find Father, AKA my son, Sean. I have a heartfelt conversation with him, but um, that's for making this story way too confusing. See you later, dad or Sean, whoever the hell you are. I run through all the enemies straight to the reactor, place the explosive charge and run back out as quickly as I can. The Brotherhood teleports me to safety and my God, the robot version of my son is here. I tell him he can come live with me because why not? Outside, I activate the detonator and watch as the Institute is destroyed. The quest ends and I get the nuclear option story trophy as well as the prepared for the future trophy for deciding the fate of the Commonwealth. Oh, and after reloading my save to activate the idiot savant perk, I gain enough XP to reach level 50. Do you even realize how much time I saved by using this perk? Even after all that hard work, I still have more trophies to get, starting with this one, where I place a grenade in someone's pockets and watch as the fun unfolds. Another trophy requires me to complete 50 miscellaneous objectives. These tasks are randomly given to you while you're traveling and while talking to NPCs, but you don't get them often. So getting this trophy is a pain in the a-hole, unless you do it like I do. First, we need to buy a lot of vertebrate grenades from Tegan over on the Pride Wind. He only carries a few at a time, but there's a chair nearby that we can wait three days on to force his inventory to reset. You're gonna want at least 50 of them, depending on how many miscellaneous tasks you have left to complete. With all my grenades in hand, I go to Sanctuary, place some benches on the ground, and throw one grenade on the ground. Am I confusing you yet? The grenade signals a vertebrate to pick me up, and a miscellaneous objective shows up, telling me to board the vertebrate. As soon as you do, the objective is complete. Immediately get off, sit down on the bench, wait one hour to force the vertebrate to leave, and then do it again. This is infinitely faster than hoping to find even a single objective while out traveling. One of the vertebrates got stuck on the ground and the pilot was not happy. I mean, look at that face. Eventually, I did it enough times to get the trophy. Remember when I was setting up for the Benevolent Leader Trophy? Well, their happiness hasn't hit 100 yet, so let's fix that. I put up random decorations everywhere, hoping it will make my settler happy, and now I'm gonna sleep over and over again until the trophy pops. It took a while, but in the end... With those trophies out of the way, it's time to reload a save to take me back to before I destroyed the Institute. This time, I will side with the Institute and the Railroad. While speaking to my son, who's much older than me, I'm told to go to Diamond City to transmit a message to the Commonwealth. The Institute is finally ready to reveal their presence to everyone. I go to the radio station in Diamond City and reconfigure some buttons and dials, return to the Institute to end the quest, and the trophy is mine. Next, I work with an undercover synth to gain information for the railroad, earning me a story trophy. When suddenly, we're invaded by the Brotherhood of Steel, I take them out without a sweat, and then go to the Cambridge Police Station to start our counterattack. I fight my way through everyone, and on the roof, I take out their vertebrates with my mini nuke launcher. Deacon gives me some explosive charges, and I take a ride on a vertebrate to the Brotherhood of Steel headquarters, and sprint past all the enemies while placing the charges in strategic locations. Back outside, we we escape in the vertebrate and watch as the Brotherhood is destroyed. After returning to Dez, the trophy pops. With the Brotherhood gone, I go back to the Institute and Father tells me to go back to the railroad and kill all of their leaders, which I gladly do, all in the name of a trophy. I don't enjoy this, okay? I return to the Institute and talk to Father on his deathbed, earning me the nuclear family trophy. Now I finished every story trophy and all i have left are two simple trophies before i get the platinum i need to create 50 weapon mods and instead of burning through those supplies which would take a while to gather i alternate back and forth between the muzzle and the suppressor until the trophy pops 
I also need to craft 100 items, so I use a chemistry station to craft jet. You can buy the supplies you need in Diamond City, making this very easy. Once I crafted my 100th item, I'm rewarded with a trophy. And for my final trophy, I need to pick 50 locks. I'm surprised I haven't gotten this already, but oh well. I only need a few more, and I know the perfect place to get it done. The bank! I hack the terminal to open the vault, and inside I pick every lock until I get the trophy. Wait for it, wait for it, and there it is! The Platinum Trophy, I did it! Fallout 4, baby, let's go! But honestly, I did that so fast, I kind of want to play more. Should I Platinum another Fallout game? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe, and just go ahead and nuke that like button. Thank you so much. Oh, and how long did it take me to Platinum Fallout 4? About 22 hours, which is mind-blowing to me. I'm not a speedrunner, and getting it done in a third of the time that was estimated? Nice. So, you want to hear a story, huh?